Well, it's almost time for PAX East 2012, and of course, the many PAXs will happen in the future. Uh, but, you know, a major problem, at least at the last PAX, and probably for many PAXs to come, was counterfeit badges. This was a minor problem in old days, because, you know, PAX mails the badges. Well, it's a minor problem for every convention. Yeah, but PAX mails the badges way ahead of time, so the fact that it was as minor of a problem as it was, was nice. But, uh, at the last PAX, counterfeit badges were off the hook. They were an incredible problem. And anything that sells out, right, is going to have a problem with this because there are people who want to get in that just didn't buy their badges on time. Now, the thing is, I can understand if this is like a concert and all the tickets sell immediately. Or, you know, five years from now when PAX sells out, five seconds after it goes open, but we're right. not there yet. We're not there yet. I mean, PAX and other conventions don't sell out for quite some time. I mean, San Diego Comic-Con sells out pretty quickly these days, at least the hotels especially. Um, with the conventions, you know, PAX doesn't sell out immediately. It takes, you know, weeks and weeks. So if you wanted to go, why didn't you buy your badge the day they went on sale? Especially because you can resell the badges. So if you don't end up going, it's going to sell out. You can definitely give your badge to someone and recoup your loss. That's right. So you should, if you want to go, buy the badge immediately. You won't need to buy the badge from someone shady. No risk of counterfeiting. All right? So if you must buy a badge after the fact, because there's a counterfeit problem, consider this a sort of PSA to not get ripped off. Because this is a counterfeit badge. We actually got a pile of them from the convention. Yeah, the counterfeit badges, at least, you know, are surprisingly not, you know, that different. Here's from a real badge. The only reason, the only difference here is that they're from two different PAX years. So the color is different on this part. But the counterfeit is very close to what a normal badge from that year looks like. And you'd be surprised. The counterfeiting technology of, you know, printing up, you know, these fake badges is pretty good. You can be fooled easily. I was, we were at New York Comic Con last year. We we're walking down the street and some guy's on his cell phone. And he's got a badge and he's like, he's talking to his friend. Like, you know, it's just some stranger who happens to be standing next to us. And he's talking to his friend about it. He got a badge for 20 bucks. And I look at it. I'm like, dude, that badge is counterfeit, yo. And he's like, no. I'm like, yeah. Yep, we're 100%. Like, we're like, give it to us. And we're like, yeah, it's counterfeit. And it was. Once you realize how to spot them, they're pretty easy to spot. So the, the reason we're doing this is twofold. One, if you need to buy a badge for PAX, here's how to not get ripped off. Because PAX, unlike last year, is not going to help you if you have a counterfeit. Yes. Do not buy a badge unless you can inspect the badge in person before spending money on it. Okay, maybe the guy had a picture on his website of the badge and you could tell from the picture that it was real. That looks legit, right? Well, or wait a minute, here's a picture of my actual badge. I mail you this one. Yeah, duh, duh. <laughs> duh, guys, the picture, he doesn't have to send you the exact one that's in the picture. You can put a picture of a real one and send you the fake one. Now, the second part of this is because if you know how to spot them, they're obvious to spot. And the more people who notice these, the harder it is for people to get away with this shit down the road. That's right. And the reason we do all this is because PAX ran into a big counterfeiting problem and their response was not to stop mailing the badges. They're still mailing the badges. I don't know how many of you have been to a non-PAX convention. Like Oticon has more people than PAX. It's gigantic. 25 to 30,000 individual people, not turnstile count like PAX does. It takes like four hours to get your stupid badge because 10,000 people line up Thursday night to pick them up in person. That's right. Now, they're afraid of counterfeiting, so they won't mail the badges. PAX had the balls to keep mailing them in f instead and despite of the counterfeiting. So you guys help us out. Help us keep them mailing those badges. That's right, because if they stop mailing the badges, well, shit. Now, <laughs> the easiest way to figure out a fake badge, here, hold this star. We call the fake badges stars. Here's a real badge. There is no human way I can rip this badge in two unless I am the Hulk. There is no way for me to split it down the middle. No matter what I do, I could like fold the badge, I could cut it, but I'm not going to be able to take my hands and just tear it in two. Yeah, this was made by a professional badge making company. It's like a serious piece of plastic, you know? It's not just like anything that's fake is probably something that came from like a desk jet and was laminated or something like that. It's not something someone had done in bulk as an ultra professional job because no big professional place with that kind of quality printing equipment is going to print something that says PAX Weekend Pass if you're not PAX. All right, it's going to be from a shady place with lower quality equipment. The colors are going to be off. It's going to have it's going to be obviously inferior in quality to the real deal. Now, from a distance before we get to the final halt test, there's a lot of things that it'll be slightly off. The colors will be a little different. That little text at the bottom with the copyright and the thing will be off a little bit usually because of the way the offset printing works. 
Uh, the top will be off. Like everything will be slightly askew. Yeah. But from far away, you can't really tell because even consumer equipment these days, you know, you can go to the Staples and buy a high res scanner and a high res printer and it'll look pretty good. But there's one thing they can't do. First, the new badges this year have holographic technology, which is at least a little bit harder to counterfeit. Yep, you need to get a, a place that can make you this specific hologram. Now watch and out, at anime cons, what I've seen people do is take holograms from other previous badges or even different conventions and put them there because the Well, staff... that's because those badges are a holographic sticker affixed to a paper badge, right? If you if the badges at PAX, <laughs> I think the new ones, I think the hologram is like built into it. I haven't actually well, even I haven't weren't. seen one in person, but Other cons, the staff are not super diligent, so if there's a hologram, you'll get away with it. But at PAX we have it on pretty good authority that if the hologram doesn't match, it'll be obvious right away. Mm. But the simplest test without doing any sort of like deep analysis is to take the stupid badge and grab by the edge and try to split it in two. Because, oh shit, they're super easy to rip in two. Because it's just a piece of paper that was laminated and then cut. So it's not sealed on the sides, right? It's, it's not a piece of plastic with printing in the middle of it. It's a piece of paper that was printed at a cheapo place, which means you can split it open in the paper area. So literally, the easiest way to tell a counterfeit PAX badge is to take it and try to rip it in two. Now, this, of course, only applies if they use the same method of counterfeiting. So it is highly unlikely that they will have a better method so close to the con because the, pic the badges got mailed out kind of late and the badges have different features this year. So this is the best test, I think. Also, the cost, right? The cost of counterfeiting fancy badges can be prohibitively high to the point at which you won't really make too much money by trying to sell them. Now, one other thing I do want to bring up is that there are other kinds of badges. I mean, we always have the speaker badge, and there's, this, you know, there's the GA badge and all these other badges. The badges that aren't normal attendee badges are not transferable. It says here that this is not my badge. This is PAX's badge. They can take it away from me, and I am not allowed to give it to any other human being ever. I think it says that on the regular badges too, doesn't it? No, regular badges, they can take it away because they still own it, but you are allowed to resell your regular attendee badge. Mm -hmm. But if someone tries to sell you any badge that isn't a normal three-day or Friday, Saturday, or Sunday badge, they're, breaking, they're violating the TOS anyway. They're not allowed to sell it to you. They probably stole it because no one's going to sell their speaker badge legit. <laughs> no one's going to sell their yeah, guest what, badge Yeah, what legit. speaker is going to go in? To, because you can only get this at the con, right? You can't get this mailed to you. So who's, who is like a VIP that's going to show up at the convention, get their VIP badge, and then try to sell it? Yeah, is Will Wheaton like, man, I really need money? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's going to be fake if it's not a regular badge. So if someone tries to sell you a, a weird badge, tell an enforcer because something shady is going on. Either they found some poor guest badge. They might've robbed it from someone. Yeah, or somebody is really up in the counterfeit game. <laughs> uh. So uh, that's it. That's all we have to say. A little, a little PSA for PAX, but I do want to say not aimed at PAX, but aimed at Otakon and all these other anime cons and everything. Mail the goddamn badges. That's right. Look at this. PAX still does it despite all these problems because it saves so much time and so much money. There is no reason to not mail your badges if you're a medium-sized con or bigger. And this is to all the conventions out there, right? You need to be really much harsher on the people who do get in with counterfeit Anime badges. Boston now, stepped up. They right. have a way better policy. Now, the fact is, all right, it is true. Someone who buys a counterfeit badge unknowingly and then tries to go into the con is completely innocent. It might even be a little kid, right? They're naive at best. That's yes. the crime. Right? And it's like, did they really do anything wrong? No. However... They, but you need to just kick them out mercilessly and not let them back in because that's the only way people will learn their lesson not to spend money now, the on example some shady badge. Is if I go to Shea Stadium with a counterfeit baseball ticket, no matter how nice I am, no matter how yeah, nice that old... Yeah, it doesn't matter It's if always a nice old man usher at the, or even at the entrance who's scanning the badges or the tickets... He is not going to let me in, no matter how nice he is. That's right. Even if you were like the saddest story in the world, like a little disabled kid, right? Everyone loves him. Maybe they would be nice and let you in for free, whatever, right? But if you walk up with some fake ticket, there's still going to be like no admittance. You have a fake ticket, right? So conventions, don't, if someone has a fake badge, just kick their ass to the curb. That's it. End of story. Now, if you're not sold out, Right? It's a non-sold out convention. Then piece of cake. Yeah. All let, right, here. You want to buy a badge? Yeah, you want to buy a badge? Sure, buy one at full price like everyone else. If you lose your badge, oh well, buy one at full price like everyone else. But if you're sold out, you're done. Go home.